Hi, this is Jim. Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. You can find us on the internet at babyboomertales.com. There are links to our Facebook page, to a link where you can purchase our book, and links to places where you can listen to our podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, and more. The title of today's episode is Leon Russell. I used to really like going to concerts. It started when I was in high school. The band I was in, we all went to watch Paul Revere and the Raiders. Remember them? Kicks just keep getting whatever. And it was fun. And we spoke about this in a previous podcast. Later on, after I got out of high school, I went to a lot of concerts. I really thought that that was just the greatest thing in the world. A few of the highlights of concerts I went to, I went to John Denver, who was in concert with Bill Danoff and Taffy Nivert, the authors of Take Me Home Country Roads. They were at Red Rocks Amphitheater outside of Denver, and that's a wonderful place to go to a concert. I also went to Simon and Garfunkel at Red Rocks, That was very memorable because as they were walking out on stage, there was a loud bang. It gave me the impression that it was a gunshot. I don't know, but they ushered them backstage immediately, and it took at least a half an hour for them to come back out. So I don't know if it was a gunshot or what, but they put on a very good concert. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Also saw Linda Ronstadt at Red Rocks a month before we were married, my wife and I. So it was in September of 77. Sat in the rain all day long with a bunch of friends so we could have front and center seats. And it was worth it. It definitely was worth it. Red Rocks is just a place to go to a concert. I would highly recommend it. Maybe a bucket list thing. I don't care how old you are. The atmosphere there is wonderful. And I went to many concerts there. Also went and saw Elton John, and that was crazy. He was so good. I really didn't expect him to be that good. It was a little bit after his Tumbleweed Connection album. I really didn't know how flamboyant he was. That's not a big selling point for me, but he put on a great show, and I have always liked his music. One time before Woodstock, it was in June of 1969, I was living in Denver for a while at the time, and I was going through my stage where I thought I could live with no money. And the Denver Pop Festival was starting, and it had many big stars in it. And they would pull in about 50,000 people a day. So on Sunday, the third day of the three-day festival, I decided I was going to go, and I went there. Tickets were $6 a piece. And a friend of mine and I had no money. And we're standing there wondering how we could get in. And there were people crashing the gate over in the outfield part of, I think it was still called Bear Stadium, the old Mile High Stadium. And tear gas was going off. It was quite a scene. The tear gas would float over to the seats where the paying customers were. It was a bad situation. But we didn't want to be part of the gate crashing deal. I never have believed in doing stuff like that. So we got this big idea. We started picking up pop bottles. Well, pretty soon we had too many pop bottles to carry around. And $12 worth of pop bottles, $6 a seat times two, is quite a few pop bottles. So we started saving them at this one gate that we wanted to go into. There's a cop standing there, and the cop told us that he would guard our pop bottles if we want to go off looking for more. So everyone was calling the cops pigs and down with police and things that might even sound familiar with today. But that cop stood there and guarded our bottles. And we went around, and it took a very long time. But we got enough pop bottles, and we went across the street and turned them in. And we had enough to buy our tickets. I don't know if we got the 12 bucks or if the cop loaned us money. I really can't remember. But I know that we worked real hard getting those pop bottles. And the police officer stood there and guarded them while he was watching the gate doing his job. And we got in. And I remember Three Dog Night. One is the loneliest number. Remember them. And Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends. 
And the marquee guy that day was Jimi Hendrix. Purple Haze. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. He played those. If you've never seen a YouTube of Jimi Hendrix playing the Star Spangled Banner, you ought to. It's worth the price of admission. Later on in life, when I was in my 40s, we went to a Amy Grant concert in Kansas City with our kids. They were probably preteen by then. And our tickets were situated right in front of a bunch of speakers. And the sound was so loud and the speakers were pointing right at me. And it felt like it was going right through me. And I almost became ill from it. Now this is an old concert goer. Didn't care. And when the concert was over, I swore I would never go to another concert. And I didn't for years and years and years and years. But in the last couple years, we went and saw Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. And we saw Amy Grant again with Michael W. Smith on a Christmas concert. And that was a wonderful concert. And I don't think she cranked it up as loud anymore. But what I want to talk about is a concert. I was about 21 years old. I had a brand new Toyota car first new car I'd ever bought and a friend of mine named Gary and me. Gary knew two girls in Denver and we took them to the concert and my date was a lovely young lady and I was probably trying to impress her but we got to the concert a little where we were running a little late and I get to the parking lot and they wanted some unheard of amount to park the car which I was not prepared for. And so I got a great idea. We just parked across the street from that parking lot. It was over kind of behind the Denver Coliseum. The concert was at the Coliseum. And by some railroad tracks. And it was actually pretty close to the Coliseum. And I really thought I was doing good. Saved some money. Parked close. Went in and Leon put on a great concert. One of the best concerts I ever, ever went to. And coming out of the concert that night. We went to where we thought the car was and no car. We looked all around. Then we started circling the Coliseum, looking everywhere. We looked everywhere and there was no car. Well, I know I had to call the cops, tell them I believed my car was stolen. And I'm not exactly sure how we got back to the girl's house. A couple days later, I got a call from the Denver Police Department and they had found my car. And so I turned it in to the insurance company, told them. They said, well, go get your car. And so I caught a ride to Denver from the little town I lived in up there in the mountains in Colorado. Got to Denver, and I probably walked six or seven miles through the bad part of the town, walking and walking and walking. And it became very late at night, and I was still walking through a questionable part of town trying to get to the impound lot. And I finally got there. They let me have my car and a window was broken. And I know exactly what happened. They broke the window because they saw all this stuff laying in the car. Stuff. I mean, cameras and sunglasses and whatever you had back there in 1971. And as they were rummaging through the car, I had another set of keys in the glove box. So they just got in and drove away. Cleared out the car and abandoned the car. So Gary wanted me to claim a bunch of stuff that was not there at the insurance and we kind of had a fight about it. I wasn't about to do it. I was either so stubborn or so naive. I could have rented a car. I could have taken a cab to the impound lot and claimed all that on the insurance. But no, I caught a ride and I walked, risked life and limb to get my car. I went back when I got my car to the girl's house. And I tell her, hey, I got my car. And I think what she was looking at is a guy that was so stupid that he left the keys in his car, didn't pay for parking, put her through a bunch of hassle. And she was kind of cold towards me. And I do not blame her. Every time I hear of Leon Russell, hear one of his songs or whatever, I think of that yellow Toyota car and the concert at the Denver Coliseum in 1971. And walking through a tough part of Denver in the middle of the night. It was quite a time. So I might go to another concert one of these days. Although I'll never get to see Leon Russell again. He's passed. My most memorable concert in my life. Bar none. 
If I'd go to another concert and it would top that, something huge would have to happen. I really like music. Now for a segment we call the Top 10 55 Years Ago. That is the Top 10 Pop Music Songs of 1964 this week. Number 10, Save It For Me, The Four Seasons. Number 9, It Hurts To Be In Love, Gene Pitney. Number 8, by Martha and the Vandellas, Dancing In The Street. Number 7, Where Did Our Love Go, The Supremes. Number 6, Do Wa Diddy Diddy, Manford Man. Number 5, Remember, Walking in the Sand, The Shangri-Las. Number four, GTO by Ronnie and the Daytonas. Number three by The Animals, The House of the Rising Sun. Number two, Bread and Butter by The New Beats. And the number one song by Roy Orbison and the Candymen, Oh Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman Walking Down the Street. 1964 had some pretty good music. Music is a wonderful thing. It takes you back in time in a blink of an eye. I think it usually always reminds me of good things and not sad things. Music's a good thing, I do believe. I went to a lot of other concerts in my lifetime. When I was in high school, I stumbled upon the Up With People concert. And actually went to a couple of those at Red Rocks. And those were great, inspiring concerts. Do you remember those? I went and saw Steve Miller three times. I kept thinking, well, the next time it'll be a better concert. He was so good on his albums from a recording studio. But I never thought he ever sounded like his records. So I kept trying and trying. And I really liked Steve Miller band records. One time with Steve Miller were a couple groups I had never ever heard of. The first one was these guys, they came out and they weren't wearing shirts and long scraggly hair and they put on quite a concert. They were called Alice Cooper. And the other one, and this one was crazy wild, the album had just been released or their 45 called Inna Gata Devita, Iron Butterfly. And that drummer played that drum solo like you hear on the original album for half an hour or so. He just pounded on that, pounded. I think they only played one or two songs because Inagata DeVita took so long. I was very impressed. I've seen the Newsboys, Glenn Campbell, Andy Williams. I was in the front row of a Janis Joplin concert. It was a theater in the round and the stage rotated around and around. And every time she came where she was facing me, I, I just fell in love with her. She had the sweetest countenance about her. Now, I know she lived a troubled life, but her music and how she touched the audience, especially me, was an amazing, amazing thing. And I've always loved Janis Joplin because of that concert more than anything. One time we walked into this place in Denver and Joe Cocker is supposed to be there that night and the doors were unlocked and I walked in and there was Joe rehearsing. I sat and watched this whole rehearsal just right there, right in front. No one said a word to me about anything. So I got a free Joe Cocker concert. We go to Branson a lot and see shows anymore. Now maybe that isn't classified a concert. I don't know. But it's the same type of situation where I saw Cat Stevens in a small hall. Probably had several hundred people. Cat was very, very good. Last concert I ever saw, Charlie Daniels. That old duffer could really play the fiddle. When I'm in my 80s, I hope I have it like Charlie has it. I really admire him. He's still going so strong. You would never know that really the world looks at 80-year-old people as old people. Not Charlie not Charlie Daniels. I know after this episode has been long published, I'll be thinking of others that I wish I would have put on this podcast. That's okay. When they come to my remembrance, I'll just hold them in my heart. Kindness matters. Be kind in everything you do, if you want to or not. That'll do it for this week. 
I will be back next Wednesday.